moving ahead, uh, getting some global perspective on this dais today, we have uh, Neha Sampat, Senior Sector Manager, Trade, Financial and Professional Services from British Deputy High Commission. Neha, please welcome on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Neha. She will be sharing her perspective on UK fintech ecosystem, some learnings for us, some uh, ex uh, case studies for us. Please, Neha, welcome. Uh, just wanted to, you know, brief you guys, update you guys about something. Pallavi, uh, thank you for bringing that up on the fraud topic. Uh, we are trying to do a dedicated segment on cybercrime at the at the March event, uh, which would most likely be led by Mastercard. Uh, so. We will look at launching a full-fledged event on frauds and scams uh, sometime next year. But this year we wanted to do a launch of uh, some dedicated events on, uh, I mean, sessions on frauds and scams. So uh, more to come that side, yeah. Over to you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Suman. Uh, thanks, Suman and Richa. Morning, everyone. Very excited to be here. I was in Bangalore last month uh, doing a panel session there and I'm delighted to be here today. Um, thank you very much Suman, Richa, Constellar team for inviting me here today. Um, just a quick intro of myself, I am Neha Sampat and I lead the trade team for financial and professional services for the UK government. So basically my role involves facilitating trade and investment between India and UK. So we work very closely with UK companies who want to enter the India market. Uh, similarly, we also help Indian companies to set up in the UK and I'm going to put Burzin in a bit of a spot. B uh, Burzin works very closely with Indian companies who are looking to set up in the UK, whereas I work quite closely with UK companies who want to enter India market. So like Burzin said, and I'll give you a couple of examples of UK companies who are present in India. But let me just start with a brief overview of what the UK fintech ecosystem is like. So as you all are aware, like fintech has been revolutionizing the financial services industry. It has simplified transactions, reduced cost, enabled innovation, empowered customers. Of course, there's been a lot of discussion about fraud out here, but I'm sure the technology also is enhancing some kind of security. We'll, as someone mentioned, we'll deal with fraud separately, but of course there is a sense of a bit of security as well with new technologies, innovations coming in. Uh, so the UK is the second largest destination for fintech investments after the US. So a lot of fintech investment comes uh, into the UK. Uh, let me give you a brief perspective of the ecosystem. So there are more than 90,000 finance and insurance firms in the UK. So you can imagine the kind of market UK has in terms of fintechs to provide services. Uh, and as Burzin mentioned, like there are more than 3,200 fintechs who are headquartered in the UK. So that's the kind of uh, market size that you would get in the UK. Uh, the fintech adoption rate is almost 71% in the UK, which is way more than the global average. And the UK sector contributes like almost 11 billion pounds and 76,000 jobs to UK economy. So that's the importance of the fintech sector to the UK economy. Uh, of course, fintech has been seeing a steady growth and an acceleration in adoption of sev adoption in several subsectors like uh, payments was discussed, rec tech was discussed, uh, insure tech, we've seen a lot of insurance companies from the UK coming in. In fact, uh, the UK insurance companies have a sizable size in the India market. We've seen a lot of UK insurers take advantage of the high FDI, the 74% FDI limit that has come up. So we have the likes of Aviva, we have a couple of insurance brokers who've gone up to 100%. So I think UK is doing quite a lot on the insurance space as well, trying to take advantage of the low insurance penetration rate, bring in that innovation. So Aviva is trying to bring, come up with a lot of innovative products. Um, what are the key strengths of the UK fintech sector, if I have to highlight? I think the first strength of the UK fintech sector is the strong regulatory environment. So we have a very strong supportive regulatory environment for fintech companies. That, that is fostering huge growth opportunities for the fintechs. Uh, the second is access to capital. 
So like I said, there are a new, numerous venture capital firms, angel investors, financial institutions in the UK, which provide ample funding opportunities for fintech startups. The third one is world-class talent. So the UK attracts a lot of talent globally, which comes into the UK, which helps fintech attract that talent, hire that talent. The fourth point is the robust infrastructure. So we have a great technological infrastructure like high-speed internet, digital connectivity, which facilitates the growth and adoption of fintech solutions. Uh, of course, government support. So we, ha we have a lot of government support come in in terms of various incentives, grants, which encourage innovation and research. Uh, international connectivity. So London is a global financial hub and attracts international talent, investors, partnerships, enabling fintech companies to access a broader market. A lot of collaboration opportunities uh, that UK presents, so in terms of uh, startups, fintech, so like it was mentioned in the previous session, uh, banks are collaborating quite a lot with fintechs. Uh, lastly, there is a range of rapidly growing regional clusters, so fintech is no longer limited to London, but overall more widely to the UK also. So we have a lot of clusters coming up, say in Manchester, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Leeds, Bristol, what, what are the any further initiatives that we have taken in terms of fintech? So I'm sure you all have heard of the regulatory sandbox that the FCA runs. And we've done a couple of sessions with FCA and the regulators here in terms of what the best practices could be for a sandbox. And we now have all the four regulators running their respective sandboxes. The other initiative is the GIFIN network, which is a global financial innovation network. Uh, we have IFSA, the Gift City Regulator, who is part of the GIFIN network, RBI. So world regulators from all over the world come and discuss various issues. We are also proposing for SEBI to be a member of this in, uh, network. The open banking frame, framework is another strength for the UK. Uh, I'm sure you would have heard of the Ron Khalifa review, which took place recently, which gave, which set out certain issues in the fintech system and what could be done to change. Like there have been listing UK listing rules, which have changed to attract more startups to list at the LSC, improvements on the tech visa, creation of a regulatory scale box. Uh, we also established a center for finance innovation and technology. Uh, there is also a pound 1 billion UK fintech fund available for startups which specifically invest in fintech. Uh, let me come to where we see partnership opportunities. So I think UK sees India as a key natural partner in accelerating the global fintech market. Uh, of course, India is among us the fin uh, fastest growing fintech markets in the world. The industry market side was almost $1.50 billion in 21 and is expected to reach 150 billion by 2025 so you can see the scale of opportunity that's there uh, our fintech environments are already very closely linked and much of the technology development and operations for uk financial services comes from india so a lot of banks have their global capability centers based out of india the uk's expertise in areas such as open banking and development of regulatory sandbox are seeding new global ideas India has also created a strong digital infrastructure and becomes a world leader in financial inclusion with the Aadhaar program. Uh, some of the key policy initiatives that the UK has is we launched a India-UK FinTech joint working group. The G2G dialogue was launched in 2018. We've had a couple of meetings and the last one was in June 2022. Uh, we propose to hold the next meeting hopefully in, a, in the next couple of months. So this is an initiative where government officials from both the sides sit together and exchange policy ideas, what are the regulatory issues. Uh, we also launched a paper on fintech through the India-UK financial partnership. Uh, we also recently concluded an economic and financial dialogue. It's a dialogue between the two finance ministers uh, where we've agreed to explore more opportunities for UPI internationally and we, we've uh, assured to form a, con a convener stakeholder group on payment system. Uh, other initiatives we have is, of course, we've done a lot of capacity building workshops with regulators and the government. Uh, we also provide commercial support through Department for Business and Trade, which is my department. And like I highlighted earlier, uh, we do offer support to any companies looking to set up in each other's market. Lastly, some case studies or examples of the UK companies who are doing business in India. So. 
you would have seen that Revolut announced creation of more than 500 jobs. It's acquired a company in India, has an AD2 license, and will imminently launch its products in India. Uh, Tide is another example of a UK fintech. They've launched their initial product. I think they just crossed uh, 2 lakh SME onboarding uh, recently. So they are, they've launched their product offering SME financing. Uh, there is another fintech called Wise, which is into facilitating cross-border payment. Uh, we also have Vinvesta, which has launched its mobile app in India, which facilitates investments into international markets through its app. Uh, there is Asset Vault, which offers consumer wills and testaments in India. Aguesto, which is a technology business that offers insurance, trade, and financial products to agriculture, food, and energy business in India. Uh, we have a couple of fintechs working with NPCI also to enable UPI transactions in London and UK, such as PPRO and SensePen. So these are quite a lot of examples or case studies of UK fintechs who are in India. I think there's a networking break after this, so I'm not going to come in the way of that. I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. And I look forward to meeting a lot of you here and in Delhi then. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Thanks.